The easiest way to learn how to ride a bike is simple. Learn how to balance first. You can use a balance bike like this one, or you can use a regular bike and just ignore the pedals. And the same method works for adults as well. But this wasn't the way that I learned how to ride a bike. 30 or 40 years ago, a lot of parents used these. These are called training wheels in the US, or I think in the UK, they're called stabilizers. You attach them to the back of the wheel like this and you prevent the bike from tipping over. It's very hard to fall when you have training wheels on, but it's also pretty hard to learn how to ride a bike. To understand why, we need to talk about something called instructional scaffolding. Say we want to teach someone a new skill, like learning to use chopsticks. One way of doing that is to simplify or modify the task in some way. Make it so they don't have to balance the sticks and pinch them and move them, but maybe they only have to do one or two of the three, at least at first. Both balance bikes and training wheels are forms of scaffolding. You modify the bike riding experience to make it easier to learn. Training wheels presume that pedaling is the most important part of bike riding, and balance bikes presume that balancing is the most important part of bike riding. Now, obviously, real bike riding requires both, but it turns out that balancing actually is really important and pedaling is not. It's a lot easier to learn. So this version of scaffolding works marvelously, while this one does not. Balance bikes offer another advantage in my experience because they reduce the anxiety people feel about riding a bike. Now, I was incredibly nervous when those training wheels came off because I felt like I was going to fall over. And I did fall over plenty of times. Balance bikes teach you what to do when the bike leans too far one way or the other. And it makes you a little more comfortable with the potential of falling over. If you start looking around, you'll find examples of good scaffolding and bad scaffolding everywhere. Let's go back to the chopsticks. So my son started off using chopsticks like these. Now these are great for mimicking the hand shape of using chopsticks, but the kid doesn't get any practice at moving the chopsticks independently and pinching them. For a while we were trying this one with a rubber band in the middle, but that wasn't really helping that much either. It feels like I have to use the chopsticks unnaturally. Helped a little bit to add one of these pieces of paper in between. As you iterate on the scaffolding you're using, you're not just learning about what works. You're learning about the nature of the skill that you are trying to teach. What's important and what's not important. What's easy and what's hard. Finding the right way to scaffold something is tricky, especially when the skill is pretty complex. But when someone cracks it, like learning how to balance first, it's a beautiful thing. If you want to hear more about scaffolding or other topics in learning, let me know down below in the comments. If you're looking for more advice about learning to ride a bike, there is a great video by the Global Cycling Network in the description down below. I'll see you on the road.